Lewis Foreman joins us today to talk further about this. Lewis serves on the Venture Prize Board, is chairman of the U.S. PTO Patent Public Advisory Committee, founder of Invensys, a, a pretty well-known uh, company here in Charlotte and, and beyond, and the executive producer of the Emmy Award-winning PBS show, Everyday Edisons. Lewis? And thank you. It's a very tough act to follow, Bob and Governor McCrory. I'm honored to be with you this afternoon because being on a college campus really brings me back to my entrepreneurial roots. I started my first business in college, and it was in my fraternity room, and it was a legal business. <laughs> and I've been starting and growing businesses really ever since. I've never been an employee, probably would never be a very good employee, because I enjoy taking risk. I love creating. And what I create is I create companies. I create products. I create jobs, and I create opportunities. And those are opportunities that brought me here to Charlotte. You know, entrepreneurs have a unique ability. We're able to process risk and reward. We see a situation, and we're able to determine very quickly whether or not that situation warrants investments, warrants risk. And that processing doesn't happen on a spreadsheet or a computer. It happens right here in our gut. Because entrepreneurs understand the balance between risk and reward. And so 18 years ago, I moved here to Charlotte to pursue an opportunity. And I've got to tell you, the landscape has changed in 18 years. Not only the city, but this university. And the perception of entrepreneurs has changed as well. When I moved here 18 years ago and I told people what I did, I told people that I was an entrepreneur, they kind of looked at me a little funny. And they said, oh, okay, I get it. You're not smart enough to work at a bank. Because, you know, back then, entrepreneurs didn't have any respect. They didn't have the great deal of support or resources. And the accomplishments that they pursued were not celebrated. You know, David Jones mentioned earlier about being the Rodney Dangerfield. And he's absolutely right, because entrepreneurs lack a lot of respect. And, and that's changing. Because today, that's no longer the case. Today, we sit at the intersection of entrepreneurship and innovation. Maybe not literally although I think our governor could change the intersection, right? Maybe change the name of a few streets here. But seriously, the pursuits of innovators and the journeys of entrepreneurs will converge at this location. The support and resources for innovation now has a home. And it's an impressive one. I mean, just look around. This is a real testament to what the public and the private sector can do together. The support and resources are critical for entrepreneurs. You know, on our PBS TV show, Everyday Edisons, I've had the privilege to meet some of this country's most successful innovators and entrepreneurs. I've been able to travel to the places where they started their businesses and see what resources they had that made them successful to allow a great idea to flourish, to take root and actually grow into something. How they went from their eureka moment to seeing their idea commercialized and available to consumers. And one of the consistent stories that I hear is that coming up with the idea, that's the easy part. Coming up with an idea is simple, but it's the execution that unlocks the real value. It's the execution, the follow through, that turns that idea into a great product or service. And along the way, you need the right resources and the right support that allows that idea to flourish. Now, of course, there's always risk in this process. And sometimes there's failure. But you know what? That's OK. Because if we don't fail sometimes, then we're not really reaching far enough. We're missing out on the game-changing, disruptive technologies that can change an entire industry. And what we need to do is continue to support the needs of our entrepreneurs. We need to encourage them to take risk and understand that those failures will occur, but help them learn from those failures and prop them back up to do it again. You know, James Dyson had 5,127 prototypes before he was satisfied with his vacuum cleaner. That means he had 5,126 failures before he was ready to go to market. And we love to tell those stories. We love to tell the stories of the successful entrepreneurs and inventors, but today, 
is a celebration as well, because today we celebrate entrepreneurs, today we celebrate innovation, today we celebrate the vision and the execution and the follow-through of this university and everyone who is involved in this project for recognizing the needs of this community and actually follow th following through and doing something about it. This facility represents an important investment. It's an investment in innovation. It's an investment in job creation. It's an investment in creating a culture that embraces change, that embraces entrepreneurs and the role that they play not only in this university and in this city, but in this state. And most importantly, like any good investment, it's an investment that will pay dividends for many years to come. Thank you.